Hey traders, it is Tracy here bringing you another trading view tutorial. Now before we get started, just a reminder that if you find value in these videos, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell. If you're interested in learning more about how I trade, please check out the links in the description below. All right, so in today's video, I want to show you everything there is to know about the watch list. So first of all, when you have your chart open to find the watch list, it's in the top right hand corner, looks like a little square with a bunch of horizontal lines on it right up here. Click on that. It's going to open up this window. Now, the first thing that you want to know is how do you resize this window? Between the chart and the watch list, if you put your cursor there, it will change to a double arrow. And if you click down, you can drag and make that bigger or smaller. So let's make it bigger so that you can see that takes care of the resizing. Now along the top, the, the first thing on the top left hand side is the title of the current watch list. It's going to have a little arrow on the right hand side. Now, if you click on that and open it up, the first thing you're going to be able to do is create a new watch list. So let's go ahead and do that. So create new watch list. You click on that, type in the name. So my favorite watch list. Click save. That's going to open up a brand new watch list with nothing in it. So now we have to add some tickers over on the right hand side. Look for that plus. That is the add symbol button. Click on it. It's going to open up this menu and you can start adding your symbols. So let's in, add in Apple, uh, Twitter, NVDA. Uh, let's add in um, Tesla, uh, AMD, uh, Qs. OK, and you can just type in the symbol and then click enter with each one. Now, if you don't know what symbol you're looking for, uh, you can just type in the name. So let's look up Microsoft. OK, so when you type in Microsoft, you can see that there's a bunch of corporations that have Microsoft in the name. You are looking for the Microsoft Corporation on the Nasdaq stock. So click on that and the stock ticker is right here, MSFT. OK, let's say you want to add uh, Duolingo because you don't know what Duolingo, uh, what the ticker is. So let's type in Duolingo. There you go right there, Duolingo. Click on it and you can add that to your watch list. Click the X to get out of there. Now in this window, what we have is uh, all your tickers along the side. Now to the left of that ticker, you can see there's a little color. Now these are called flags and I have created or I've added these flags already for my own use. Now, if you want to change the color of the flag or add a flag, just go to that area, click on it. You can see that's what it looks like with no flag. Go beside it and click on it. It's going to open up this window here that allows you to select whatever color you want. So let's change this to light blue. So now I have a couple different flags in here with different colors. So there's uh, the light blue, there's pink, dark blue, orange. That's what I have currently in my watch list. So along the top underneath your watch list title, there are some headings, some column headings. Now, the first one that shows you is the flag. Now, if you click on this, it's going to sort your watch list according to the flags. And there's three ways of sorting. You can sort it back to the original way you had your stock or your list organized um, or by color and it'll descend or descend. So if I click on this again, it goes from ascending. Click on it again. This is the original order that I had. And if I click on it again, it's descending order. That works the same way for each one of these headings. So this will sort your title or your ticker symbol. This will sort the price. This will sort the change from the prior day and or from that current day if it's open. And then the volume you can select by volume and the EXT is extended hours. Now, if you don't have all of these titles showing or headings showing, if you go over to the right hand side where the three dots are, click on that down at the bottom of that menu. You can see customized columns. I have all of these selected and that's why they're showing. So if I add the change, there's the additional column that was just added. If I want to take that away, it removes it. That's simple. OK, 
So that's how you can customize this list. Now, why do you use the flags? I use them for a few reasons. You can use them to sort your lists, but you can also use them in the stock screener. And if you want to learn more about that, please check out the video on stock screening and I'll put a link in there for that. The next thing that you can do is actually right click anywhere in your watch list and go down and add a section. In the section, you can double click on that and then type a name. So let's call this a gap up. And then let's create another one and call this gap down. So you need to double click on the section name and type in the name. So gap down, click enter. Now, if you want to remove that section, you can just go over to the right and click the X to remove it. Now you can click and drag that and move it wherever you want, or you can click the ticker and drag it into the appropriate category. Okay, now that's really cool. It's a great way of sorting your watch list without having to use the flags. So you could use your flags for other things and it just increases the number of ways that you can organize your watch list. The other cool thing is the sorting features or these headings when we click on them to sort, once you have sections created, it will actually sort according to those sections. So right now, if I click on symbol, it's going to sort inside of each section rather than moving them outside of my sections, which is nice. Same with price. I can sort by price inside of each of those sections. That is a very neat feature. Now, if we go back up into the My Favorites watch list, click down. If you have anything flagged to this color, it'll show up in here. So right now, if I click on, say, the blue list, this is going to come up with a watch list that has every single one of the stock tickers that I have flagged blue right now. And if I go into the orange list, same thing. So now let's go back to the my favorite watch list. Click on that. We're back to the watch list that we had. So if you click on that watch list again, there are all of the watch lists that I have created and yours would be named differently. And it shows you the number of stocks that you have in each of these watch lists. If you want to remove a watch list, just highlight it, go to the right and click that X button and click yes, you want to remove it. Okay. Now, the next thing is over on the right hand side with these three dots. If you click on that, we've already gone over the customized columns. So this section here, you can make a copy. So you want to create a new watch list with the same symbols in it. Just click on this, call it whatever you want, and you don't have to add uh, all the same tickers back into it. You can you can just do that. It makes it quicker. So if you have a watch list that has uh, a lot of tickers in it and you want to copy it over and maybe only delete one or two, of the tickers that are in it, it's easier to do it this way than to create a new watch list and add all those tickers back in. You can also rename the watch list. You also have the ability to import a list or export a list, and this moves it into a TXT file or a text file. The next is the clear list. This will clear your entire watch list. Now, normally, if you go to a ticker that you want to remove, you go to the right hand side and you click that X, it will remove it from your watch list. But if you want to remove everything, you can go up and click the clear list button. The next thing that's available is this public list. So if I click on this, it makes my list public and I can copy the link, give it, share it, whatever, and somebody else will have access to my watch list. The next thing which is new, it was just released in the last week, is the advanced view. So let's click on that and take a quick peek at what this does. So notice the symbol distribution right off the bat. And this is kind of a neat feature if you want to see how you're weighted inside of your watch list. But right now, what I have in my watch list is 86% stock and 14% fund uh, tickers. It also shows you the sector. So now if I just get out of here for a second and select, let's say my blue list, go back into here. You can see that it breaks it into more detail, right? I've got depository receipts, funds and stock, and then all of the different sectors. Now, the other neat thing, scroll down in the quotes. If you have sections, it'll show up in here as well. Uh, you can sort by additional categories. So you've got your market cap, etc. You can also sort by currency type or symbol type. So let's say right here, symbol type, depository receipt, fund and stock, or let's say sector, you can sort by sector or exchange. And I think that's a, a, a neat little feature. So let's go back to no group. 
You can also sort by financials. So if you select the financials tab, it gives you some additional sorting features and we can select by revenue or EPS or beta, dividend, yield, etc. All right. The next thing that's really cool is uh, down at the bottom, if you scroll down, upcoming earnings. So this shows you all of the upcoming earnings within my watch list. So I know ahead of time inside that watch list what's happening over the next little bit. And that is a neat little feature. Additionally, inside this watch list right here, if you right click on a name, you can go down, unflag it. Uh, you can also add it to any of your existing watch lists, which are quite nice. Uh, you can also then create a chart for this. And this thing here where it says add text note for New York Stock Exchange shop. If I click on this, it feels like nothing happened. Well, if you click this X button, get out of here. You notice on the left hand side it's opened up a window. This is the text notes window. It's created a new text note up for shop. You can go in, you can create your title. So this is my thoughts on shop. Okay. And then right in here, uh, I think it will go to the moon, moon someday. Okay. So now you can create whatever thoughts, whatever notes you want to create. And if you select this, it's down in the bottom left-hand corner, click on the notes and there's your note on Shopify. Now, if you want to remove that note, just click the X and it deletes the note. Okay. So that's what that feature does. And if we go back into the advanced view, right over in the top right hand corner, this public list is a little bit different than the one we showed you a few seconds ago. So if you click on this, it gives you the access for that link that we talked about, but it also gives you the opportunity to share on Twitter or share on Facebook. And that's what this new public feature, public list feature does on uh, your watch list. So if we close this back out, that is pretty much everything that you need to know about the watch lists. If you have any suggestions, comments, throw them in the comments below. If you want to know anything else about TradingView, want me to throw a video together, please make that suggestion also in the comments below. Don't forget to hit that like button, that share button, and subscribe to the channel if you found value in what I do. All right. Happy trading, everyone. Until next time.